Well, and make some kind of a motion to Gilbert, and boom, he hits him. Well, when you're in the run and shoot and you have four wide receivers, that's your version of a short yardage play. I mean, that's what other teams would do in handing it to the fullback and running it off tackle. For Houston in the run and shoot, it's a three-yard quick pass to that inside receiver. It's the same result. We're watching Houston's ball control game. That's exactly what it was. First down at the 26-yard line. Wingler again, resetting his offense. Draw play. Hostel Miles. Oh, the ball's down. Loose. Miles pops it up in the very first carry. Inside the 15-yard line. Polisek, the freshman linebacker, was there for Illinois. They had big plans for Hostel Miles today. The junior college transfer from Pasadena Junior College. This is his first carry. And it's, he couldn't have asked for much more than this. Look at the blocking. Illinois congested on the inside, and he is around the corner. But he carries that ball in that right hand when he's taking the pursuit from the right. He coughs it up, and Holosek was right there to get it. That's where a back should transfer that ball to the left arm when the pursuit is coming from inside. And that was a case where Miles just didn't get it done. One of several freshman defenders for Illinois that we'll be watching a lot of today, John Holosek. First down of 10, Illinois. They start from their own four yard line. They need seven to nothing. Steve Fagan once again over the left side, and Fagan moves for about three. Fagan's an interesting story. Here's a guy that they really would like to get him to break loose, but he's having trouble breaking that first tackler. And again, he went down to the first Houston defender that, that got a hold of Fagan. Second down and seven. This is Dan Hurt, the defensive coordinator, in his first year in that role with Houston. And around the college ranks, the Texas A&M coach was with Don Phillips of Houston earlier. Camino Bell over the left side, and Bell out close to the 24-yard line, very close to a first down, Camino Bell. Bell has emerged as the principal running back for the Illini, coming into the day with 5.9 average. Verduzco's a very heady quarterback. When you talk to John McAvick about him, he's, he prepares as well as any quarterback John says he's ever worked with. He comes in to run a football game. He's got it down. That's John McAvick with a, a little pat and a, a word to send him back into the huddle. Boy, this has gone back and forth. There's a final for you. Tennessee comes back and defeats Mississippi State. Come from behind win there for the balls. On first down, Joe Muti. Number 41. Gain of perhaps two. It'll be second down and eight. And Ryan McCoy defensively there once again for the Cougars. Well, Ben Hurt said that Ryan McCoy is the finest young linebacker I have ever been around in all my years of coaching. He's only a sophomore. He's got the size at 6'3 and 240 and the great speed. And he has the one intangible that you just have to have if you're to play in the middle where it's so congested. You have to have great football instincts. Ryan McCoy has all of that. Ooh, that's second down. That's the lateral, and it goes up. And it's collected there by Fagan, but again, every time you see that play, you it's designed, I'm sure, to go forward. Yes. Because the one risk inherent in that is if you bobble it, it can be recovered. The scores will be rolling in through the day on a very busy Double afternoon. Chance. A very busy day for us at ABC. Our colleague Al Michaels is on the West Coast calling the Arizona State USC game with Lynn Swan. That's an interesting pair. Watching their respective colleges perform. No less interesting than you and I trying to get through this. <laughs> a third down for Disco with a rifle and he out over the 30-yard line, and John Wright is there. John Wright with coming off a big game last week in a losing effort against Missouri. Six receptions, 108 yards. He looks to be a couple yards short of the first down. I believe Illinois is going to have to punt it away, but this is a very good demonstration of Verduzco's arm strength going all the way back across the field. That is a risky pass, but Verduzco had the muscle to get it there. It just wasn't good enough for the first down. Illinois will punt it out. Corey Wells 
to punt for Illinois. A low punt off the side of his foot, and Gary Parks watches it, moves away from it as it rolls to the 22-yard line. So Illinois is on top. We're just about halfway through the first quarter. Illinois leading the Cougars 7-0. We'll be back. Illinois leading Houston 7-0, 8-29 remaining in the first quarter. And Houston with their second possession. David Klingler from the no-huddle offense looking it over. First down at 10 in his own 22-yard line. Tracy Good again coming across from the wing back spot out over the 25 yard line close to the 26 yard line. <laughs> Check this guy out. Tracy Good is all of five foot six 170 pounds and uh, he's having to take it around on that wing around. I, I'm not sure that's pleasing him all that much. Second down and six. Engler tried to go with the draw backhanded and it was picked off there by Pulaski and Gustafson over the right side for Illinois. That was an excellent pass rush by Mike Pulaski. I mean he just takes the upfield rush areas at the bottom of the screen and he's going to come in from the right side as we look at the action back up towards the line of scrimmage. Pulaski though goes around the corner and comes in on the sack. Lost back to about the 23 yard line make it the 24 and it'll be third down and was there movement it certainly was movement on the part of Illinois Zitnik the nose tackle moving across the line of scrimmage I think one of the things that got Illinois a little bit there Frank Klingler was back in the shotgun we have a dead ball encroachment on the defense third down Mark Zipnik making contact, crossing the neutral zone. So it'll be third down and just about four. Ball near the 29-yard line. Right, yeah, Klingler is in the shotgun formation. He may come up under center now, but he was last time, and that's something that really got Illinois. They have not shown the shotgun before. Handoff underneath, and it goes to Austell Miles. The same play that he broke earlier and fumbled in Miles out over the 45 near the 48 yard line. Good pickup, and Miles is big six feet, 230 pound junior. I mentioned he was transferred from Pasadena Junior College, where he had enormous numbers out there. You also notice the way he covered up the ball there oh. when he got tackled. He and John Jenkins had a little chit chat after that first fumble. Now from the shotgun. Something new for Klingler and the Houston Cougars. Again, splitting the zone, a rifle shot by Klingler. And it goes to John Brown, the third. JB3, once again, they come right back with the big gainer that they had in their opening series, just splitting the Houston zone, and he's got the arm to get it in there, Dan. It's exactly the same pattern, the up pattern, and all week long, Illinois has been talking about we can't let Brown run this pattern on us. And twice they've tried, and twice they've had big completions. Freddie Cox, the corner, was late getting over there. And that was great hustle that time by Julian Brown getting all the way down there to stop that play. John Brown, three. Looks like he's in for a good afternoon. Well, and you saw the strength of that arm in the part of Klingler, though. He fired that thing about 35 or 40 yards right on the line. And Klingler back once again, looking in the corner. And the receiver is knocked off. John Jenkins. His second year as a head coach, spent three years as offensive coordinator, of course, under Jack Pardee. He's a bit of a hot spot with coaches around the country and media people. Has put up a lot of points in a lot of games where a lot of people think that perhaps he could have backed off a little bit. But this is not a back off offense. Nor is Jenkins a back off coach, and Klingler looks it over on second down and goal. Illinois leading 7 0. We're down to about five seconds on the play clock. Wingler tries to throw out into a crowd. Threw that one out there in the direction of Fred Gilbert. Looked like Gilbert wasn't expecting the ball. Wingler might have just uh, took that snap because he was yeah. going to draw five there with, as the clock was ticking down. Freddie Gilbert sure wasn't expecting it. Now, Frank, this has to be one of the shortcomings of the 
run and shoot offense. Here you are on the five yard line, third and goal, but you're still in there with your four wide and one running back. Noisy crowd, over 60,000 on hand here. Klingler very wisely fires it out of the end zone. Good coverage back there on the part of the Illini, and the crowd joins the fighting Illini as they hold Houston to what apparently is going to be a field goal attempt. And Houston can try it out, one of the most prolific kickers in Southwest Conference history, Roman Anderson. Looking for his 125th consecutive conversion. That's the Southwest Conference record. As he will add to that record. It is good. So Illinois leading Houston now 7-3, 6-10 remaining in the first quarter. 23-yard field goal there by Roman Anderson. We'll be back in just a moment. Six ten remaining in the first quarter, and really not the scoring outburst we thought we would see early on here between Houston and Illinois. The Illini leading the Cougars seven to three. It's plenty early, Frank. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Think we might be here a while? Yeah, it's uh, six ten left here in the first quarter. I, there may be another couple of scores before this quarter's over. Roman Anderson to kick off for Houston. Short kick. And moving up and getting into a debate with Camino Bell is Clinton Lynch. But Illinois will have the ball at the 26-yard line, first and 10. Let's go to New York and Roger Twibel. Thank you very much, Frank. At the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, opening kickoff, Terry Richardson will field it. He gives it to Kirby Dardar, a redshirt freshman from Tampa, Florida, and he'll go all the way, 95 yards for the touchdown. The Orange would also add another touchdown. They lead it right now, 14 to nothing. Let's go back to Frank. Illinois had the first down and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They send Clinton Lynch out over the 25 to about the 28-yard line, a gain of three. It'll be second down and 10 as Jason Verdusco, the 5'9", 190-pound junior, steps into the huddle. Was a wrestler in high school, Antioch High School, Antioch, California. John McAvitt. Now in his fourth year at Illinois, looking on. Second down and six. Camino Bell. Close to the 29-yard line. Hit there by Eric Blunt. Boy, that was a good, solid open field tackle, Frank. That's that's the way you attack somebody. If you're going to choose to tackle somebody on the upper body like Blunt did there, that is the way to stand a guy up in his tracks. Third down in about five, and Ben Hurt was telling us he's going to be need a big performance from Nigel Ventress and Eric Blunt, two young linebackers, if they're going to be successful defensively. Disco back with that deep drop. Fires and it's complete. It goes to Palma. And Palma has the yardage for the first down out of the 35-yard line. Boy, real smart pattern by Gus Palma. Knowing where you are on the field is one of the most difficult things for a receiver to learn. And Gus Palma knows exactly the depth he had to get to get a first down. I mean, he has a first down by about a yard. You can see off to the right there where the flag was. Just a well-run pattern. Not bad coverage, just extremely well-run and well-thrown on the part of Illinois. Ben Hurt, the defensive coordinator for Houston. He calls the defensive signals from the sidelines. First and 10, Illinois at the 36-yard line. Lynch breaks a big one out over the 45-yard line to the 46-yard line. Boy, you know, that's where Ben Hurt right now just had a few more hairs fall out. As a defensive coordinator, all you want to do is call the right thing at the right time. They had the blitz call that time. I mean, in the right spot, McCoy comes flying through and doesn't make the tackle. What hair Ben has left is falling out rapidly after plays like that. Well, they do blitz big time, too, against Miami. 
when they played them about 10 days ago, they were blitzing and they were down 21 to nothing. I guess they got a bad ball, but they, they blitzed through the entire game. And uh, this time to Fagan, and Fagan is met behind the line of scrimmage. Ventress. Michael Ventress, the junior linebacker. Ben Hurt was telling us the strength of this football team is our linebacking core, and here's just another player that comes in and gets in on it. There's Nigel Ventress with, a, again, a textbook tackle, driving Fagan backwards. So far, we've seen plays by Blunt and Ventress and McCoy. I mean, this is a, this is a, a strong linebacking core for Houston. Second down 11. Houston likes to blitz on second and 11. Illinois keeps it on the ground, and Illinois... Falls on Clinton Lynch, and Lynch is up to midfield. It'll be third and long, third and six for the Illini. Pretty good ball control, uh, ball control here by Illinois. John Makovic's club, and you can't blame them for wanting to do so. Every team that plays Houston this year is going to want to eat up as much of the clock as possible, consume as much as you can offensively, and keep... David Klingler and the rest of that group over on the sidelines. This is a, a drive that's working pretty much to the way Illinois would like to do it all afternoon. Third and six. Turner, the intended receiver, and good coverage by John W. Brown. Yeah, well, you can hear what the crowd thinks of that coverage by John Brown. They wanted a flag. Let's take a close look at it. All right, there is Brown working against Albert Turner. Again, the crossing pattern to the inside. You no, know, that's just, that, that's a well-timed tackle by John Brown. The ball was already past Albert Turner when he put his left arm on it. Corey Wells to punt. Jerry Parks is dropped for Houston. Parks calls for the fair catch, and the ball moves through the end zone for the touchback. 2.32 remaining here in the first quarter, and the Illini lead the Cougars 7-3. A reminder, Monday night, Dan and I will be moving up to Soldier Field to watch the New York Jets take on the Chicago Bears. The Bears getting by the Giants last week, and the Jets with a fine showing against Buffalo. It is Soldier Field time. Mike Ditka stalking the sidelines. Mike Singletary, of course, in the middle. Question, is, is that other guy, what's that, uh, that other guy works with us? Uh, uh, is he going to be there? <laughs> what's you, his know, name? you know he has eyes and ears. He's listening everywhere. <laughs> oh, Al. Al Michaels. Yeah, he'll be there, too. Al, of course, playing the Arizona State and USC game. And a big day for college football here on ABC. On first and ten, the Cougars cling back. Klingler chased out of the pocket and tried to get rid of the football to Tracy Good. Incomplete. Mike Hopkins was kind of caught in the middle there. The resident genius on this defensive team for the Illini, an aeronautical, astronautical engineer. Well, I think Hopkins played that beautifully. He came up just far enough to keep Klingler from coming across the line of scrimmage and running the ball and stayed far enough back that Klingler was forced to put it in the air too high and trying to get it to good. That, that was just a great play by Hopkins. Second and ten. Trips left. Three wide receivers are put to the left, one to the right. And the ball is thrown underneath to Austell Miles. And Miles with a pickup of about five yards. Not over the 25-yard line, but the play read very well defensively by Illinois. Rucker, the lead tackler, the Extra back now being employed by Illinois in their nickel defense. They're going with three down linemen, two linebackers. One of the Illinois players, I think that's John Holosek, was forced to Light come out. For injury. Holosek's helmet is uh, in some shape, manner, or form bent, broken, cracked, or has a problem with something or other. John Holosek. The freshman linebackers that's seen a lot of action today. This will be a situation where Illinois will drop back into that zone. Try to force Illinois to work underneath. Six defensive backs now. Third down and five for Houston. Draw play. Miles, but the whistle sounded before the ball was snapped. Still Miles. Well, they didn't use too much time. There was still four seconds left on the play clock. Did somebody move? Formation. Same 
Jenkins. We have a dead ball, false start on the offense. A little movement that we didn't detect, but it doesn't take much. Frank, I'm not sure we could detect big movement from where we are. <laughs> he needs an eagle eyes up here, doesn't he? <laughs> Our position located high atop Memorial Stadium here on the campus of the University of Illinois. Played a lot of great football players have played on this field, Ducky Field. Third down and ten for Klingler. Short drop. Fires back across the field to Marcus Grant. Ooh, let's and Grant is this. close to the first down. Let's see where they spot this ball. I think they're going to give it to him on the other side of the 30. It looks to me like that's good for a first down, and it is. But Dan, we saw the strong arm of Klingler earlier to John Brown splitting the zone. And watch this one back against. Now he sets up over here and just throws off the wrong foot, fires a back. That's strictly arm. That's a sidearm toss by David Klingler. That's the kind of stuff that gets the pro scouts. That gets their juices flowing. On first down, Klingler looking for Marcus Grant. And it's incomplete. David Klingler, 6'3", 210 pounds. Uh, fine athlete. But fine athlete. As strong an arm as I have seen. In high school, now check this out. Here's a guy that high jump 6'9", long jump 24 feet, has a 38-inch vertical jump. I mean, we are talking about an extraordinary athlete at the quarterback position. Had he hurt himself a week ago against Miami? Not only minds of many professionals, Still Miles. Oh, and Miles Hello. pulls his way out of the 40-yard line. I think that was Derek Rucker, the DB for Illinois. I think he came in and put a just a tremendous shot on a Stell Miles. Well, watch the tail end of this play. Again, Miles works to his left, just the delayed handoff. Excellent blocking up front that time. But watch from the right of your screen. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that is Rucker, number 39. On first down. Klingler. Fires to Tracy Good. The pressure is on Klingler, but he's been able to dance around back there out of the pocket and find the open man. That was good pressure to force him out of the pocket, but he just kept alive until he could find. And you're looking at uh, John Jenkins. He's just seeing how long it took for him to get that ball off. Well, he's also got some plays there on his arm. I believe they're written on the side of his arm. Some coaches carry a clipboard and rely on that. Jenkins has them taped to his forearm. A gain of eight. Right to midfield. It'll be second down and two. Illinois seven, Houston three. We'll be back. David Klingler's younger brother, Jimmy Klingler, a freshman red shirt on this Houston Cougar team. Yes. He's bigger than Klingler. He's 6'4", 210. He has to be a little more aware of when he might be on camera here so we can get him to. There you go, Jimmy. They could be brothers, they look so much like. Second down and two as we begin the second quarter. Klingler with the, with the play action, and it does not fool the defense for the Illini. Coming across and making the stop. Six man now in that defensive backfield as David Hill comes across on the blitz, ignores the fake draw, and makes the stop. There are the numbers for the first quarter. You can see the edge and yardage in favor of Houston. Those two big passes down the sideline to John Brown, accounting for most of that. But Illinois has put together the more sustained of drives so far. Ball resting close to the 45-yard line. Third down and seven as Austell Miles wants to double-check what he thought he heard. And whatever he thought he heard, it wasn't it. But Klingler breaks out of the pocket and steps out of bounds near the 49-yard line. Now bring it back to the 49-yard line where Klingler stepped out. Other than those couple of long passes to, to Brown, the Houston offense, again, just doesn't appear to be in, in total sync, Frank. I mean, they... Uh, there seems to be some hesitation. You see Miles there, number 34. I, looks like he might have gone the wrong direction. I mean, Klingler is rolling out one way, and he's moving the other. And that had the, that had the look of a broken play. That's what he was querying Klingler about before that ball was snapped. He set up on the wrong side. 
He got into the traffic and paid dearly. Fourth down and Houston will go. Fourth down and about two and a half yards. And Pengler looks over the defense. Running Boy. short on time. No, well, actually he wasn't. He just did not like what he saw and he calls timeout. Well, I did. Boy, I, I'm hard pressed to uh, to see the strategy in, in going for it. Now, maybe he was going to stay under center and try to draw Illinois off sides. But at this point in the game, this early in the second quarter and only a 7-3 to three score in favor of Illinois, bold play by Houston going for it on fourth down. And it's not fourth and six inches either. It's it's fourth and, and every bit of a couple of yards. In fact, closer to three yards than it is to two. So John Jenkins talking to his literally his extension on the field. John Jenkins a strong advocate, more than strong advocate of the run and shoot offense. He thinks definitely is the offense still to come. And he's taken it a little bit of a new level, even from that of what Jack Pardee had when he was at Houston. Well, they've had the right people at the throttles, Frank. Andre Ware and, and then David Klingler. Does help, doesn't it? Like a Warren Moon with the Houston Oilers. Well, how does the one city get a lock on the run and shoot like that? I mean, they had the Houston Gamblers, where Jim Kelly was doing it, the University of Houston, and the, and the Houston Oilers. And this is a... Uh, this is just aggressive football on the part of Houston. Fourth down, a little more than two yards to go for the first down. Yeah, and I'll tell you what happened there. David Klingler tapped his center, and David Klingler backed out expecting the football, and he didn't get it. He center, didn't get it. Center thought it was somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Good ball. Full start on the offense. Yeah. Fourth down. Well, a classic case of where the 12th man gets an assist. The crowd here at Memorial Stadium in Champaign discombobulated. Here you see Klinger, he takes a step back, and the quarterback can have a false start just like any other player on the field, and that was the case there. And with the bad news, the good news is on fourth down, now they'll kick away still with good field position as Phil Mel Johnson comes in. And remember, that's not the type of play where you could decline the penalty even though it was a completion. That's a dead play. It never happened. That was Johnson and Charles Langston will punt away for Houston. Hey, hey. Low kick that goes off Langston's foot but takes a good Houston bounce and will be marked at the 11-yard line. So the Atlanta leading 7-3 with 13.57 remaining in the second quarter. We'll have a first and 10 at their own 11-yard line. Frank Gifford along with Dan Deerdorf. Champaign Urbana, Illinois. The Houston Cougars and the Fighting Illini of Illinois. The Illini leading 7-3 just underway here in the second quarter. Illinois has the football first and 10. The ball at their own 11-yard line. Rodisco pitches out to Camino Bell, and Bell gets back to the 15-yard line, or the Steve Fagan with the pitch out. Fagan, one of the most celebrated high school stars to come out of Florida in a lot of years, in Deerfield Beach, Florida. Rodisco at 5-9. He never really has a problem seeing over the six foot four and five offensive linemen. He does take a very deep drop, and they do roll him out a lot. Second and six. Camino Bell. Cranked it on the inside to the 19. One of the things I like about Verdusco, though, is, is when you see him look and survey around the field. You can tell that when he makes a decision, one of the things I like about him is how quickly the ball leaves his hand. How quickly he can stop, plant, and throw the ball with good technique. Some quarterbacks just don't get rid of the football as quickly as Jason Produsco does. And that's a great aid. John McAvick told us he's always thoroughly prepared for a game. One of the most prepared football players he's ever worked with. Third down and two, and the line I go to the air, this is Delger, the tight end, and Delger out to the 45-yard line. Third down and a long two, and Illinois goes to the big tight end. 
And that's a red shirt freshman tight end, and he is a great target for Verduzco at 6'5 and over 240 pounds. And here's just a good example. You can see that Dilger wasn't the primary receiver, but he was so wide open. Well, there'll be a lot of pro scouts watching yeah. Dilger grow up at 6'5 and 240. He was a high school quarterback, a good athlete. And Illinois has a first down at their 46-yard line. Bacon in motion. Camino Bell. Bell powers his way to midfield. Gain of four. That pass to Dilger didn't end up in a touchdown. It'll be semi-lost in the stats of the game when all the plays are running added up. But when you think about the fact that Houston punted pinned Illinois back around their 10 yard line and now Illinois is already operating up at the 50 yard line those are the kind of plays when they get you out of that kind of trouble if you end up winning the game you look back to three or four plays that that could be one of them the disco looks over a second down and six play action the disco deep drop and almost picked off Gary Parks Defensively there for Houston, almost came up with the interception. The disco I mentioned was 5'9 and 190 pound. He was a lettered four years in wrestling at Antioch High School in Antioch, California. Well, trying to go to number five, John Wright is Verduzco, and Jerry Parks just missed the interception. Boy, that was looked like a ball that he that he could have had rather easily. Third and six. Three wide receivers right. The disco pulls it down after the good pass fake downfield. The disco saw good coverage on the part of Houston, pulls it down and gets the first down. Move the chains. Move the chains. This was really good protection initially there by Illinois. You see everybody just gets run right by Jason Produsco, and it was excellent coverage in the Houston secondary, and that's just one of those things. That's, that's, that's where everybody was doing their job pretty effectively in the secondary for Houston, but Produsco on his own picked up a first down. Back to the inside. So there's a late flag. Clinton Lynch, and the flag comes in late. That was Ryan McCoy on the tackle, and I don't know if he got a hand on a face mask or not. We have a five yard face mask against the defense, still first down. Jim Kimmering, the referee. There comes McCoy at the top of your screen. See him up there in the left corner. Oh, yeah, and he reaches yeah. out and. He just puts the handles on Lynch with that right hand up on the face mask. Good call by the official. First and five. Yardage is not enough, of course, for the first down. Ball at the 37-yard line of Houston. Over Turner. Inside the 25-yard line. Verduzco is putting on a clinic with throwing the football. I mean, that was another strike to Turner. The Illinois receivers are having a lot of luck in breaking their patterns off to the inside. That time, Steve Harris was in pursuit, but just too far behind. But this is going to come back. Loss of down. A good effort on the part of Produsco to get that ball to Turner. We have a 15 yard, and I believe I heard the referee say loss of down penalty against Illinois. The ball is backed up all the way to the 49 yard line. Offensive pass interference. Yeah, we were being told it was on the far side of the field, something out of our camera shot. And a very late flag coming in. And another flag. Well, that's one of the Houston players was 
about two yards in the Illinois Dead backfield. Ball, encroachment on the defense, still first down. And we'll collect five of the Met. Second down. Second down. And long yardage in situation where my Houston Oilers like to come with the blitz. They're showing. Here they come. He just go with a quick read. He was ready for that. Had the perfect play called. Ben Lynch was almost as if they knew Houston was going to come with that blitz. A set play. They pulled Lyman in front of Lynch. Beautifully executed. Well, if you're going to work off tendencies, this is a high blitz down in situation for Houston. And John Makovic, who calls the offensive plays for Illinois, gambled that they would blitz, and boy, did he hit it right. The perfect play called for the blitz. And Illinois has overcome that disastrous penalty. First and 10 inside the 25-yard line of Houston. Bench again, close to the 20-yard line. Bench at 5 foot 10, 187-pound sophomore with good speed. A reminder, big day here on ABC. Tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central. ABC's college football is back with more regional action. BYU will meet Penn State. The fourth-ranked Washington Huskies will face ninth-ranked Nebraska, or Georgia will battle the Alabama Crimson Tide. The best is here tonight on ABC Sports, so stick around and enjoy. Well, that Washington-Nebraska game, that's that's an all-star effort there. I'm anxious to see that. Second down for Disco. Throws well short of intended receiver Elbert Turner, and it is well that he did because Turner was well covered. I think Darren Woods, the safety, picking up Turner as he made a deep crossing pattern. This is, there is Turner, and there was just absolutely not, uh, no, no chance at all. Daniel Johnson was the DB in front of the ball. What about this drive by Illinois? Keep in mind, this started all the way back around their 10 yard line. They have eaten up a big chunk of the clock, and they have consumed a lot of the field as well. They're down and set. Disco fires shot and is complete. Homa once again. The senior wide receiver who missed the action last week against Missouri. His third touchdown of the season and a brilliant pass by Verduska. And he is putting on a clinic then. Frank used the term brilliant, and it's difficult to argue with that. That's as pinpoint a pass as you will ever see, because really, the Houston coverage is very good. Palma's coming across the middle. I mean, look at the coverage. That, I'm not sure Palma knew right away he had the football. And that is, again, the Houston secondary finding themselves vulnerable to the crossing patterns of Illinois. Chris Richardson gets the uprights, and Houston continues to work the clock, and they continue to put the points on the board. They lead the Houston Cougars 14 to 3 with 8:45 remaining here in the second quarter. We'll be back in a moment. Everybody wants to throw a touchdown pass. How badly do you want to throw it? Watch the hit that Cadrez puts on Jason Verduzco. That is a cruncher. But this makes it worthwhile. I mean, a perfectly thrown ball to Gus Palma. And Illinois has their second touchdown of the day that culminated a fabulous drive. 12 plays, 89 yards, eight up over five minutes of the clock. And, and that just, and they overcame the big interference penalty that set them back. Big time drive and score by Illinois. And great calls coming in. A great call on a third and long situation by coach John Makovic that sprung Lynch for a first down. Richardson hammers one down to the three yard line. Casey Good will bring it out. Good with a good move at the 20 yard line. Spins out close to 
the 28 yard line. Well Frank now here comes something interesting uh, a team that doesn't have to do it very often but for the second week in a row Houston's having to play catch up football. I know they have the offense to play catch up football in that run and shoot but still this is a team that's used to being in front of people and adding it on. Now they're finding themselves in arrears. Even though it's early, it's still an unusual situation for them. You know, they've been puzzled by the Illinois defense, which is alternating between four down linemen or three down linemen and a down linebacker, and anywhere from five to six defensive backs. But Klingler has been back. He gets forced out of the pocket. Now he finds an open man. Splitting the zone is Verlin Brown. That was about the first time that Klingler looked like he was comfortable back there, was able to sit, look downfield, and he didn't have pressure. Yeah, he didn't have pressure. I think <laughs> you saved the most important for last. You're right. He had plenty of time to, to look downfield and throw it again working out of the shotgun. John Jenkins thinking that he was going to surprise Illinois using the gun. There it is again. Four man rush and it pays off with the sack at the 41 yard line. There's Mike Pulaski. Pulaski was there first. By far the best of the group up front for Illinois he had five sacks coming into today and he's been there a couple times so far and that's sacking the quarterback with the the ends of your four fingers on the left hand he did not get much on David Klingler. Pulaski got there first and Joe Wall was there who Tepper said he would need the defensive coordinator who said he would need a great effort by both these men he got one there second down 13 yards to go So Miles and Miles dropped out close to the 47 yard line. Pulaski once again. Boy. Strong series so far for this senior from Joliet. They're not big, Dan, but they're they're very quick. Notre Dame pouring it on Michigan State. Texas AM loses by a point. Third and eight. Klingner again chased out of the pocket. And with no receiver downfield, steps out of bounds at the 45 yard line. David Klingler being nonchalant over towards the sideline. Rutgers over Northwestern. Wisconsin, Iowa State holding it close. Fourth down. Central Michigan wins again, beating the Zips from Akron. Langston comes out and Phil Mel Johnson, number three, will drop for Illinois. <laughs> Illinois' last drive started with the 11 yard line, and that's exactly where Johnson has positioned himself for the punt of Langston. Uh oh! Langston in trouble, and very wisely kicks the football if we don't see a flag for Lyman downfield, and we don't. Good move by Langston. What so often happens is the punter will pull the ball down like that, decide to run with it, and come up short. And that time Langston with a real good head on his shoulders, punt it away. Yep, that was a smart play by Langston. There Illinois will start at their four-yard line. Let's look again. Although he, he made a decision that it was going to be blocked, and I'll tell you what, that's that's as heady a play as you'll see a punter make. And he run with the football he would not have been able no. to run for enough yardage for the first in the NFL that would have drawn a penalty for people being long gone by the time he kicks the ball but here as I suggested <laughs> Frank you and I both are having trouble realizing <laughs> this is a college football game and not the NFL and 7 1 <laughs> remains in the first half Illinois leading 14 to 3 over Houston Fagan out over the five yard line up to the 11 yard line. No, no, I think uh, you might see them spend a little more time on the ground. They've been very successful with it and it does move that clock. Well this is a, such a big series defensively for Houston and that's a discouraging way to get it started giving up that many yards on first down. This would be the perfect opportunity to make Illinois go three and out and set up your own offense in some decent field position. Second and four. Quick snap. Clinton Lynch. Lynch with a lot of speed seeing the most action that he's seen all year long and putting up the best numbers. He gets a first down. Lynch out close to the 24-yard line. The sophomore. 
187 pounder. Frank, wouldn't you agree this is most impressive, the work we've seen so far today by the Illinois offensive team. I mean, they are they are dominating the defense from Houston. Well, as you know, Dan, in, at any level of football, when you can run the football, and Jones himself has run for 35 yards on six carries, when you can run it, you can throw the football a lot better. Makes that defense check themselves. They stop to think before they rush. The disco again, throwing a rope. And he connects with Albert Turner out over the 35-yard line for Illinois first down. I know it's a little, I know it's a little premature in this game, but uh, Jason Produsco is saying to himself, you know that Heisman Trophy wouldn't look so bad sitting in my family room either. Again, the crossing patterns. Illinois with a setting a real precedent here early in the ball game by finding their receivers open across the middle. Everything that seems to break to the inside is open. Very little sideline work. Why should they? Everything in the middle is open. First down, Illinois. This go again. That should draw a flag. Yeah, it does come in late. Well, that's one way to keep a receiver breaking <laughs> from breaking to the inside. Mug him at midfield. <laughs> and John Wright was mugged. Just as he was attempting to go to the inside. There watch he is, top right. of your screen. Yeah, watch this. He's going to make a move to the inside. There he breaks away. We have pass interference oh. against the defense. It'll be a spot foul. First down. Kenny Perry, number eight. Don't ask me to explain why he just took a bead on right and leveled him. I mean, there's just no way you can do that. I can only assume that he'll plead temporary insanity. I lost my head. <laughs> and who will listen? Nobody. Another first down for Illinois. Medusco, 8 of 12, 162 yards. Klingler numbers. Wrong performance for Jason. Forty-six yard line. Rudisco fires to John Wright Jr. Rudisco completes the and John has reception at midfield. By the way, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet most viable player of the game from each team. And for the 21st year through the Chevrolet scholarship program, $1,000 will be donated to the general scholarship fund of each school. And Jason Verdusco has won that award from ABC on three different occasions. So he likes the ABC cameras. Fagan to the outside. And Fagan picks up a couple, give him three to... The 48 yard line. Eric Blunt over there on the tackle. And good pursuit by the linebacker. And again, as we mentioned earlier, the, it's a strong linebacking core for Houston. But right now, it's John Makovic's offensive team that is just clicking beautifully. Cool, calm, and collected. John Makovic got his coaching start under Bo Schembechler at Miami of Ohio back in the mid 60s. Turn around, San Jose State, Miami of Ohio. Dallas Cowboys, head coach, Kansas City Chiefs. Third down at four. Verdusco gets hammered, but he gets the ball out to Palma. And Palma down the sidelines for another Illinois first down at the 33. Ryan McCoy chased Palma down, but Verdusco, very cool. He knew once again he was going to get hit, but he delivered it. Well, this, is, uh, this is Illinois surgery, and I'm not sure that they're I don't know that they've supplied Houston with an anesthetic. Produsco stood in there with the rush, even though the blitzing McCoy went right by him. But boy, look at the pass again, and that was a fine catch by Palma. Looks like Palma stepped out of bounds right there. You can see where his right foot hit the sideline, and that's where they spotted the ball. First down. They work from the 33-yard line. Flag, fly. And Bacon flag on the play, the ball carrier. Initially at the 34 yard line, driven back to the 35. You saw a graphic there that said Illinois has converted six out of eight of their third downs. When you convert 75% of your third down opportunities, it's difficult to lose. We have a an game. illegal shift on the offense. First down. It is tough to lose a game when you can convert six out of eight third downs. John Makovic talking with Fredisco. Here is Ryan McCoy, and boy, he takes a shot on the right side. 
That was Tony Laster, the tackle that came in there and collapsed his leg from the inside. Middle linebacker, a lot happens coming at you from all different angles. First and 10, 38 yard line. Met right at the line of scrimmage. Nigel Ventress was there first. Eric Blunt, who is alternating in and out of the defensive alignment. There's defensive coordinator Ben Hurt, who sends the next defense in. They blitz a lot, this Houston team, and they blitz a lot in this situation. And this is the situation in which Illinois burned them a little earlier. Second down and long, second down and about 14. Time remaining in the first half. Here it comes, and this time they get to Verduzco. Kenny Perry coming on the safety blitz, and Verduzco is dropped back at the 45-yard line. Blunt came from the linebacking position, and Kerry, Kenny Perry comes from the safety. We're going to see a missed block right there. Boy, that's great athleticism by Blunt. Perry gets there from the outside, Blunt from the inside. Perry was unblocked, but Blunt had to hurdle an Illinois blocker. And just when Houston needed a big play defensively, they got it. When you buy a Super Color Special TV antenna from Radio Shack, you get a great value. And Radio Shack has everything you need to make installation easy. He spent a long time on the sidelines. Illinois has had several long drives here in the first half, and he spent the majority of this half on the sidelines or running from the Illinois defense. They pressured him all day. Third down and 23, and a quick snap. For this guy, and wide open is done right. Right will be short of the first down to the 32-yard line. This will be maybe a 48, 49 yard field goal for Illinois if they choose to try one. Just go again with a lot of time. He went on a quick snap, gets the protection. He was sacked on the play before, and this time a lot of time, and he gets the ball out to John Wright. And I think Illinois here calls a timeout to decide whether or not they want to try a field goal or go for it. Okay, we're going to have a little break here. Let's take a look at the University of Houston, located here in Champaign-Urbana. Memorial Stadium here in Champaign-Urbana. If you're confused about your geography, we are in Champaign-Urbana, home of the Fighting Illini. A lot of tradition goes with the stadium this field. Red, Red Grange played it. The dedication game here back in 1924. George Hallis played here, left the campus to form the Chicago Bears, took the colors with him. And right now, with 2.30 remaining in the half, it's fourth down and nine, and Illinois leading 14 to three. Leaves the punter on the bench. and found Camino Bell for the first down. Houston can't catch a break, and it's because of just some brilliant plays on the part of Jason Verdusco and his Illinois receivers. Again, under pressure, it looked like a sure sack on a fourth down situation, and it ends up being a first down. Here comes the pressure on the left side. That's Cadrez who misses him. And then he's buried, and right before he goes down, he delivers it. Oh, that ball's on the field. Ball is loose. Houston says they have it. It was Fagan, the ball carrier. Cadrez is down there holding the football. How are they going to rule this? Nobody's making a decision. Well, we know they won't be reversing it then. No, no instant replay here in... Uh, no replay in the NCAA. Illinois is going to keep the ball. On the play, it was ruled. Illinois kept possession.
possession, second down. Illinois keeps possession, the ruling on the field, and Verdisco now 12 of 16, 206 yards. And if you are a Houston Cougar fan, right about now you have to be saying to yourself, is nothing going to go right for my club? Two tight end offense now for Illinois. Camino Bell, big opening over the left side. That's the run formation, and is the ball loose again. Well, he looked like he was down. Houston pulled the ball out. That's a good call by the official. He was down on his back, and uh, one of the Houston players smartly ripped the ball loose, but he was down. Bell carries it to the 12-yard line. Another look. See, there goes Bell. His progress there, he goes down on his back, and the play is really over right there, but that's good work. That's James Bevel, the nose tackle, who pulls that ball loose. That's Third the way as a defense. You keep scratching and clawing and trying to make a break, and Houston needs one desperately. Third down and two inside one minute, remaining in the first half. Clinton Lynch finds a little gap on the right side and exploits it down inside the five-yard line. A reminder coming up at halftime on the Prudential Halftime Report. Roger and Bo bringing the latest college football news, scores, and highlights. Plus, Roger speaks with Michigan head coach Gary Moeller about last week's dramatic win over Notre Dame and the Wolverines' date with number one Florida State next Saturday. And they'll also talk about that fourth and one touchdown to Desmond Howard. All that at halftime. First down, goal to go. Illinois dominating. Crept to the corner. It was lost by Lynch. Yeah, but not before he picked up some more yardage. 21 seconds remain on the clock here in the first half. Illinois was still two timeouts remaining, so that the clock really isn't a factor as far as dealing with timeouts, but they have to. You'd have to think they've got a couple more plays to get after it here. It's only second down. Second down, goal to go. Oh, the tight end trapped in the middle, and the back didn't follow him. Oh, if he just goes off Dilger's rear end, that's an easy Illinois touchdown. Camino Bell. <laughs> Dilger came back on an inside trap. Bell took it to the right side. He's short of the goal line. Boy, you, you don't go back to where the guy left who's doing your blocking. If he just hits right off the crease, right behind Dilger. Here we're going to take it. Here it is right from the end zone. Here comes Dilger in motion. You see the crease right there. Uh -oh. If he just follows Dilger into the end zone. Woo. That's a walk-in. Hey, this is a little startling. Illinois has had the ball a little over 20 minutes. While Houston has had it just under nine. There it is right there at the time of possession. And you're right. That is what everybody would like to do against the Houston Cougars. Well, Ben Hurt and his group, if ever they had a big play, this would be the proper place and time to execute that big play. They need a break. And in this situation, the only way you're going to get a break is to make it yourself. Third down goal to go. 13 seconds remaining in the first half. The Camino Bell and Joe Media are the setbacks. 13 seconds remaining. Here's where being at home is a big help. Camino Bell, and again, it'll be Mark Short, and it will be fourth down. Oh, uh, here we go. This is interesting, mm. Frank. Do you go for it, or do you kick the field goal? Well, I think ordinarily you would go for it, but your defense has been playing so well, you have to figure that ordinarily Houston's going to put a lot of points on the board. you got to gamble a little bit, but the Houston Illinois defense has played so well, they... Kept Houston to just three points here thus far in the first half. So 
I, it's a tough decision. You know, I, you know, I was an offensive lineman, so I always maybe had a jaded perspective, but that ball is at the six inch line. My, I always thought that if you can't stuff it in from six inches out, that you shouldn't win the ball game anyway. And when you're playing a team that can score points as quickly as the University of Houston, I think the players are telling John Makovic, let's go for it. Let's go for it. If we don't get in, we'll suffer the consequences. And that's exactly what they're going to do. As John Makovic sends his offensive unit back out. And even if they don't get in, you go in with a 14 to 3 lead. And I think here is a, a good case of where the risk uh, uh, justifies the potential reward. Sergiani Jopes, three tight ends. Camino Bell, 34. Joe Muti, 41 with two setbacks. Houston. Smart call. Smart call. Illinois playing an almost perfect first half. Tactically, physically, in every way. And uh, Houston Cougar is down. We've got an injured Houston player down in the end zone. Here it is from behind. If you're the middle linebacker, Ryan McCoy, this is your look. This power football. There is a good lead block out front by Jonathan Kerr. There's Dilger in motion. Here comes Kerr, the guard, around to the outside. And Camino Bell just gets it in. They didn't have far to go. Darren Woods was the injured Cougar, and now he's being assisted off the field. And Chris Richardson will come on for the conversion with four seconds remaining in the first half. And there's Darren Woods. You know, Frank, the temptation really would have been there to kick the field goal and get the sure points, but I'm sure John Makovic took one look across the field to see that offense that's on the far sideline, and that, that certainly was a factor in his decision. Of course, you know, Bo Schembechler back in the studio will probably have a different opinion, but... I want to hear my, about that. As my former coach, he never agreed with anything I, I said anyway. So. Thoughts about that fourth and one pass to Howard. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that's what he would have thought. <laughs> I'm positive. <laughs> Chris Richardson for the conversion. He misses. No it. good. <laughs> now it's 20 to 3, Illinois over Houston. And a surprising development here in Champaign Urbana. Houston Cougars coming off that 40-10 loss to Miami 10 days ago, and Illinois trying to bounce back from their upset loss to Missouri, 23-19. There is Dilger in motion on the fourth down play. Boy, that's a good solid block as he turns up field and gets a kick out on Tyrone Davis. And that's just power football, and there you get a look at, yeah, there's Darren Woods going down clutching that right leg. You know, Gary Moeller was on Bo's staff when he came to Ann Arbor in 1969, and now Gary has taken over as head coach. And I wonder uh, how much second guessing he would have endured if that would have been an unsuccessful fourth down play. Look at that scoring drive 96 yards. Keep in mind, their scoring drive prior to that was 89 yards. You put together drives like that during the course of a football game, and that is everything you can ever ask an offensive team to do. But Gary Moeller would have, uh, if Elvis Gerbuck's uh, pass would have fallen incomplete to Desmond Howard, what a miserable week that would have been if Notre Dame would have won that game. As it was, what a great yeah. week it was. Darn right. Richardson squibs one along. Torn Pope brings it out. And the time will expire here in the first half. And we're fighting my line. Exa to an ovation. And we're going to return with next time activities. Champagne Urbana, Zupke Field, after this message and a word from our ABC station. Stay with us. Three deep for Houston as we await the kickoff here of the second half. The Houston Cougars down by 17 points to the Fighting Illini. And for Houston, a very tough first half. They only have the 
ball under nine minutes. Offense seemingly totally puzzled by a zone changing zone defense of Illinois. We're set to go. Frank Gifford along with Dan Deardorff. Chris Richardson will put it in play. Deep kick by Richardson. Carries deep into the end zone to Tracy Good. And Houston will get their first possession from the 20-yard line. Well, one of the things you like to do is consume the clock against Houston. Drop all the way to the bottom. 21 minutes and 4 seconds. Illinois has monopolized the ball and the clock. Put up 295 total yards in the process. And it is surprising when you look at the top left and see Houston there, only three points. David Klingler, who now takes over the Houston offense, was 10 of 15 for the first half, 144 yards. His counterpart, Rodisco of Illinois, is 12 of 16, 204 yards and two touchdowns. And Klingler comes out bombing away to Freddie Gilbert, and Gilbert has first down yardage up to the 35-yard line. Well, that was that was a good move by Gilbert on that screen, waiting for his lineman to get out there and throw the blocks. He caught the ball before they got there, and I know he had to fight the urge to just take off with it. Look at him, wait, 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 that's it. Let your guys get out there. You saw John Morris, number 54, the left tackle, get the lead block that sprung him. That was good work by Freddie Gilbert. From the shotgun, new formation for Houston. Klingler in trouble, as he was most of the first half. Out of the pocket, finds the receiver, and connects downfield to Berlin Brown. Those might be the best-looking back-to-back plays that Houston has had so far in this ballgame. But again, it was a scramble by Klingler. Yeah, they've had a couple big plays, specifically John Brown on, a, on an up pattern down the sideline. Klingler's read was yep. to the right, his pre-snap read. Chased out of the pocket, and Cooley finds Verlin Brown. That was a good throw, Frank, for a right-handed quarterback running to his left. The first down is at Illinois' 49-yard line. Now still Miles, a couple of yards to the 47, hit there by Holosek. John Holosek, the freshman linebacker. John Jenkins. His second year now as head coach. He calls the plays. He obviously designs the plays. And his extension on the field, David Klingler from the shotgun. In and out of the hands of JV3, John Brown, the third. Pass that should have been caught. A flag is down, but again, Klingler, he amazes me, Dan. He, he threw off the wrong foot and just smoked that thing in there. The ball appeared to be a little behind Brown. He had to kind of torque and spin back to try to get a hand Pass on. interference on the offense. Whoa, Ooh, that hurts. We have pass interference against the offense. 15-yard penalty is previous spot. Loss of down, third down. Ooh, that's major, major. Out of consideration in college football that these are Sometimes just boys and young men playing this game. Uh, I think wisely so in college football, Frank. They don't identify the the number of the player uh, who got the penalty the way they do in the NFL. I think that's I think that's a good idea. I think it's a good I agree. Rule. And we These are just kids. These are just kids. Third and 22 for Houston. Klingler lays one out about 65 yards. Down he goes. Unfortunately, John Kowalski was there. Unfortunately, John Brown was only about 60 yards downfield. That's true. This Kowalski levels Klingler long after he has delivered the ball. And that would have drawn a flag where we work on Monday nights. That's well. I, I think even on the collegiate level, that's roughing the passer. I mean, Kowalski took two, maybe even three steps and put a helmet right in Klingler's back. It's a tough kid. Delmar Johnson is back. Langston just does get it off, and the flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Johnson driven all the way back. Bobbles the ball at the 10-yard line. Covers there, but a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Now, there were people across the ball, and I'm not... I can't speculate whether it was Illinois or Houston. There was mass confusion at the line of scrimmage before that ball was, was kicked away. All right. Inside Illinois, and I would think that perhaps Houston would want to decline that. 
It doesn't give them enough for we the have first offside down. offside on the defense. Penalty is refused. First down. The penalty yardage would not have given Houston a first down. And you're right, Frank. With the mishandle of the punt, it puts Illinois in four field position. Illinois with their first possession here in the second half. They beat 20 to 3. We'll be back in a moment. Not have a more beautiful day for football at any level. Temperature in the 70 degrees. Little or no wind blowing on the field, and everything has gone in the way of the Illini as they take over first and ten. Their first possession here in the second half. Jason Badisco with big numbers in the first half. And normally with a team, you talk about how disastrous it is to start back on your 10-yard line, but Illinois in the first half had a couple of extremely long drives one of them 89 yards another one 96 yards so this may be their uh, starting spot of choice back here they have they have shown that they are able to keep the ball for long periods of time and cover big chunks of yardage in the process Brent Lynch picked up one into the second and nine Lynch had 45 yards to lead the Illinois rushing attack in the first half his biggest numbers by far this season that's Bell over on the left side. And Bell is out over the 15, close to the 18 yard line. It'll be third down and three as Tom McAvoy continues to direct the attack, which he did. Again, I... close to flawlessly in the first half. He yep. made some super calls. We're back, though, to another situation of what a tremendous boost to the confidence of the Houston Cougar defensive unit if they could force an Illinois punt here. To the pocket once again. Now steps out, gets in trouble, and delivers the ball once again. A spectacular play. Ben Lentz. Oh, that's with a good ball. speed. He bobbles the football. It's loose and it's covered by the Illini. How many breaks can they get on a single play? As Ken Dilger is there. What? <laughs> I have seldom seen the ball bounce in one team's favor the way it is for Illinois here today. But you make your own break. And this is just extraordinary quarterbacking by Jason Verdusco. I mean, hit, falling down. He somehow gets enough on the ball. Houston tips it. I mean, that is actually tipped, and they still end up. Ventress tips the ball, and it's an Illinois completion. And then Illinois fumbles the ball, and it bounces to Ken Dilger. I mean, everything is going in favor of the Illini. That was about four good things that oh. happened for Illinois, and nothing happened good for Houston. Consequently, first down, Illinois. At the 40-yard line of Houston. Play action fake. Velasco wants to go deep to Palma. Palma's third touchdown of the day. Gus Palma. Verdusco hiding the ball. Palma in a full sprint, man for man coverage. 40-yard touchdown. And another 90-yard drive for Illinois. This young man is putting on quite a show. Oh. You can go weeks without a drive of that length, and we've seen three of them in a little more than two quarters of play by the Fighting Illini, and look at the tight spiral thrown by Jason Verdusco. Again, the coverage was not bad. Not bad at all. Jason Produsco did not come into this season a Heisman candidate, but after three games, you have to seriously put him in there. Richardson splits the uprights, and Illinois leads 27-3. There comes a point in time in every game where you... You look down and you look at an offense like Houston and say, well, don't worry about it. They can pull it out. They can bring it back. They can score quickly. But this young man has turned it around. And Illinois can score quickly. And they can keep the football. Their average scoring drive, how long, Dan? This well, their touchdown drives have been in excess of 85. I mean, this is unbelievable. I mean, 289, 289s, and a 96. I mean, that's extraordinary. And 
Richardson pounds another one into the end zone. So Houston will try again from the 20 yard line. And we talked so much about the offense for Illinois. The defense has really played well today. They have totally confused the run and shoot offense of the Houston Cougars. We you know Frank Tepper doing a great job there defensively. Houston beat Louisiana Tech 73 to 3 in their first game. Since that game has ended, to this point in time, they've been outscored something like 67 to 13. That uh, that shows what a struggle it has been for Houston since they walked off the field against Louisiana Tech. Six defensive backs now for the line eh? as they settle into their zone. Tingler, draw play. Austell Miles stacked up at the 22 yard line again of a couple. Starts to happen a defense that maybe worried a little more they should have about this offense in Houston. You're going to see a lot of things start to become self generating with this defense. They're going to be the guy that wants to make the play. And you saw out there is Don Holosek move smartly across to make the stop on Miles. Second down and eight. Quick shot to Freddie Gilbert. Gilbert only a couple of yards on that. This was a play that was open, not the only play that was really open. That and the long bomb to John Brown, who caught a couple in the first half. But that and the new short pass to Gilbert was about all that Houston has been successful with. And that up pattern to Brown is what Illinois ought to be looking for right now. Spinning the zone on the left side. Great, great effort on the part of Klingler first to get away from the sack, then to get the football off to Gilbert as he threw it sidearm. I'm not even sure that was sidearm. That might have been under him. <laughs> I saw him practicing this yesterday afternoon. Remember Dan over the sidelines? He was doing just this. You're right. Whipping the ball underhand. Look, he gets away from the sack. Klosky is there. Wall is there. I mean, that, that was really sidearm. That looked like Kent Colvier or somebody throwing a baseball. First and 10, 43-yard line. Klingler gets away from one of the Illini rushers. That was Holasek, who was in the backfield once again. And Klingler, again, not having the time to set up and deliver the ball. Here's a guy who once ran a 4-5-5-40, and he demonstrated that kind of athletic ability and speed right there. David Klingler is 6'3", 210 pounds, and as we talked about, combines that great athleticism along with that fine arm. Second down and eight. He needs some help, though, from this front wall. Houston's offensive line has got to give Klingler time to throw the ball. He was sacked five times ten days ago by Miami. Big haul for Austell Miles. Miles all the way to the 35-yard line. Maybe the Illini defense getting just a little eager to get to Klingler. Left a big opening for the draw play. The defenders coming in on the pass rush is pretty easy to take them whichever way they're going. That was a good call. Notre Dame, you see they're 433 yards rushing against Michigan State. The Buckeyes winners. Another first down for Houston. Klingler with a lot of time and not an open receiver. And again, he throws one off balance, this time incomplete as he tries to go upfield to Sherman Smith. Smith, 5'7", 160. A lot of little folks running around out there today. A lot of little tough folks. Keep shuttling the receivers in and out. Klingler, 13 of 22, 195 yards. No interceptions. Remember, 116 attempts and no interceptions this year. Well designed play to Gilbert with a blocker out front. And Gilbert breaks it back, but the Illinois defense collapses on Gilbert. Well, I think that was Mike Hopkins who just made a fine play. He was out there and fought off a tackler and turned that thing back to the inside. Gain of five, second down and five. Klingler looks it over. Again, that little quick 
shot to the outside. This time goes to John Brown. JV3. Well, now that was that was a good looking play. The I mean, that, he looked with by Gilbert. Yeah, he looked like he was going to throw it to the inside guy Gilbert like he has in the past. It's coming back a motion penalty against Houston, but he, that was intentional. He threw it beyond Gilbert all the way out to John Brown. But it's we have an illegal shift not. against the offense. Still third down. Referee is Jim Timmery. An illegal shift. Houston right now hurting themselves. That was a first down play. Stead now to bring up a third down and a full 10. He trips it to the left. Moving Marcus Grant, the single wide receiver to the right. Bingler, a lot of time looking for a receiver. Uh, that's in oh no. and out of the hands. Well, the Illinois defender, Mike Hopkins, uh, he had such a shot at it. David Klingler's parents looking on. Or a youngster off the field, too. Good student. They got to be so proud. They have to also be concerned about what happened to him 10 days ago, Dan, and also what's happened to him here. Well, right now, he's forced to try to make something happen. I mean, he's a big-time competitor. That was that was a play that very nearly backfired on him. You just don't stop and throw all the way back across the field like that. Another fourth down play for Houston. Fourth and ten. This time it's picked off. Hopkins picks it off. Or Robert Crumpton in on the dime defense. Crumpton, the freshman, makes the interception. Well, it's desperation time on fourth and ten. Good protection for Klingler, who again throws sidearm. But Crompton just right in front, and there was not a Houston receiver within five yards of the ball. And the freshman from St. Louis comes up with a play that he'll remember for a long time. Someday he'll say, I, I intercepted David Klingler in a big game at Champaign. Klingler's first interception in 142 attempts. Crompton will remember that, and here comes Camino Bell. Big opening, and Bell all the way out to the 47 mark at the 48-yard line. You know Bell having a big day, running the football, along with Clinton Lynch. Here is a good look at a defensive line just being eradicated at the point of attack. Up front, Laster and Went, Simpson, Hopkins, Kerr, the guys that are really controlling the line of scrimmage for the Illini. First down, 48-yard line, the Illini. Camino Bell hit the line of scrimmage, scoots to midfield. Gain of a couple, it'll be second down and eight. Those are the numbers as we treat toward the midway mark in the third quarter. Illinois dominating. On time of possession, they moved the ball well on the ground. And Jason Verduzco has been sensational. Big opening, and here goes Clinton Lynch. He's got a lot of speed, and he's gone. So long. sophomore with the speed it is a relatively small front line for Houston and they are being manhandled there is the blitz a great lead block up front by Camino Bell boy and there goes Lynch that was sensational at the point of attack by the offensive line and then Camino Bell takes down the blitzing linebacker I and say Danny ought to give Camino Bell three of those points that was a great block well the run and shoot is going to have to do a whole lot of running and a lot of shooting to get back in this one. It's been walk and pop so far. 
And it is now 34-3, to Illinois over Houston. University of Houston, they lost 10 days ago to Miami, 40 to 10, and they are being pulverized here in Champaign-Urbana by a fired up fighting Illini who can do nothing wrong. And they have not only performed well, but they have been getting the bounce of the ball every break one might possibly get. And they lead 34 to three. Richardson again hammers one, this time through the end zone. This is a pumped up football team and that goes for their kicker. So what does John Jenkins say to his boys on the sidelines. We can put up a lot of points but he is down by 31 with about a quarter and a half to go. And the Illinois defense again has been so troublesome for Houston. Klingler has made some spectacular plays but he usually makes it after having come out of the pocket first and ten Houston the 20 yard line the screen goes out to Tracy good well designed and it gets six and good coughs up the football but I think they're going to mark that he was down John Streeter was there defensively as he rolled out from his defensive left hand position oh. There are Mr. and Mrs. Clint Lynch. Clint Lynch's mother and father and boy, how proud they must be, huh? He's had a great day. <laughs> what a kick that must be to watch your son come through like that and uh, crank Great's off shot. the big one. Klingler to Gilbert. And maybe he gets one out of it. Marion Primus. Marlon Primus. Great well, they, a great football player. He's there. big, isn't he? Oh, yeah. You look at the safety and you see one of the 6'4", 225, you think, give me an outside route. Yeah, he's got NFL written all over. Third down and three. Klingler trying to pre-snap read. Draw play. Austell Miles close to the first down, and they'll mark it out over the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Houston. If I think back to the last time Houston had the football, they had a good drive underway. They completed a first down pass to John Brown. That was called back because of a penalty, and then that really stalled their drive. It's just been a, a weird kind of game for Houston. Absolutely nothing has gone their way. A lot of it's self-induced. First and 10 from the shotgun. Look out. Then there again, chased out of the pocket. And then there again, almost intercepted, trying to get upfield to Tracy Good. Derek Rucker was close to the interception. <laughs> Illinois continues to shuffle defensive linemen in and out of the lineup. They stand up linebackers that are providing the pass rush, keeping fresh people in there to harass Klinger. And they've done it all day. Second and ten. Klinger. Gilbert steps out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Third down and four coming up for Houston. A pass that the Illinois defense is more than happy to concede to the Cougars. They can have all of those that they would like to have. They have got to go vertical. Houston has got to somehow get the ball upfield. Tracy Good, and Good will have another Houston first down out over the 45-yard line. Well, I like this Tracy Good. I mean, for a little guy, 5'6", 170 pounds, he's, he's not afraid to stay in there and take a shot from somebody. Former high school running yeah. back, Dan. A lot of toughness. I mean, it's, I don't know. The last time I was 5'6", and 170, I was in about the second grade. So I, I'm not maybe qualified to talk about how tough you have to be to play at that size. I can only speculate. It looks like your earlobe. Klingler tried to squeeze one in and it was deflected by Aaron Shelby. Lou Tepper, the defensive coordinator 
who was quite critical in the local press about uh, John Jenkins and the way they run up points against teams has designed a superb defense for today's game. There is number 53, Shelby. Gets himself right into the pattern. Took him a while to get there, but he got there. Well, he's just floating back in his hook zone. Inside linebacker, that's his job in the zone. Get back into my area and defend that area. And that's what Shelby did. Second and ten. Kramer, this time with plenty of time, but no receiver. Tries to go deep into the zone. And Marcus Grant was the intended receiver. Good coverage downfield. Robert Crumpton was back there. Illinois keeps changing from a five-man defensive back set to a six-man defensive back set, and this has totally befuddled Houston thus far. That's Jimmy Klingler. That's David's younger brother, the freshman. Three down linemen now. As there are six defensive backs on the field for Illinois, third down and ten. Got a hurry. Just did get it off. Good move by Klingler. Picked off. Marlon Primus. Two Houston receivers were in the same area. Klingler tried to get it in, deflected into the hands of Primus. I think that that would have been a completion. I mean, that, that's just an indication of how bad it's going. I mean, he was actually throwing the ball, and Marcus Grant came across and actually deflected it away. Boy, I mean, it's just, when it, when it begins to fall apart, it's disintegrating for Houston. You know, I've played in games like this, Dan. I know you oh, have. Yeah. You, you say, well, can't wait to get home and start over because things are not meant to be today. Illinois takes over first and 10 their own 43 yard line and they will I think seriously work on the clock Steve Fagan over the left side gets a couple second down and eight a little over five minutes remaining here in the third quarter and David Klingler 10 days ago a tough night against Miami when he certainly showed another side of a Klingler he is one tough cookie he was sacked five times had nowhere to put the football many times still didn't throw an interception in 59 attempts and today he's having another rough go of it second and eight Camino Bell over the left side and Bell will get a, another two it'll be third down and a long three how many times have we said that only to have Illinois come back and make that third down conversion? Well, you can do a lot of things offensively when your offensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage, and that's exactly what's happening now for the Illini. And with this man, he has been Mr. Magic on third down situations today. Jason Berdusko. with a great move to the outside ordinarily you would say headed north and south when you're looking for the first down but he made the move they got the first Bell actually looked like he could have easily picked up the first down if he would have stayed inside opted to go outside and even though it's a it's a good hit down around the ankles there by oh, wow. Batiste he's <laughs> that's that's nice work there by Camino Bell Kevin Batiste, quite a story. He's 25 years old, was in the Toronto farm system in baseball, and is a freshman at the age of 25. First down, Illinois. Clinton Lynch having a big day to the 40-yard line, a gain of four. Talking about Batiste, Frank, I, I've heard about not wanting to go back to the minor leagues, but this is a real, uh, this is a real change of pace. Batiste had spent those years uh, in the minor league system of the Blue Jays, only got up to the to the big show for a very brief period of time. You see there, Lynch almost ready to go over the century mark. Very happy mom and dad looking on as he had having the best day of his career. Second down and seven. Rodisco with that characteristic deep drop and a man open beyond field and this time knocked away. 
reminder, join us next Saturday when ABC's College Football brings you an afternoon of action. First at 12 o'clock Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. The number one ranked Seminoles of Florida State battle the third ranked Michigan Wolverines. What a beauty that's going to be. Plus, at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, regional coverage follows as Georgia Tech takes on Clemson. Colorado meets Stanford or Pitt tackles Minnesota. Check your local listings for the game in your area Saturday on ABC Sports. And don't forget, that is a 12 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Central start there for that Michigan-Florida State game. Verdesco somehow avoided the sack as his line collapsed on a third down and seven. Tyrone Davis in on the blitz. There is Jason Verdesco's mom. I think it's safe to say. He's come a long way to be here today. Uh, California, Antioch, California. And this youngster is having another great game. I mentioned earlier, he has three times been our player of the game on ABC television, and he is looking awfully good today. Something disastrous is going to have to happen. Corey Wells. Corey Wells. Misses the corner, catches the end zone, touchback, and Houston will take over once again from the familiar area of their 20-yard line. 3.02 remaining here in the third quarter. Frank Gifford along with Dan Deardorff taking a little holiday away from our colleague Al Michaels who's out of the L.A. Coliseum with Lynn Swan watching Arizona State and USC. And we're going to pause five seconds and allow all our friends and affiliates along the line to identify themselves. First and 10 Houston from their own 20-yard line. Klingler fires out of the flat. Houston down 34-3 with 2.58 remaining in the third quarter and a game that has been thoroughly dominated on both sides of the line of scrimmage by the Illini. Only came in without an interception in 116 attempts. Stone two today. <laughs> On second and ten. Austo Miles, the big junior college transfer out close to the 28-yard line. Had over 1,500 yards at Pasadena Junior College and averaged almost six yards a pop doing so. The passing game, though, of John Jenkins, Houston Cougars, is out of sync. This is normally a very vertical passing game, stretching it downfield with a big chunk. Haven't seen a lot of it today, just a couple times. Third and two. Looking for the quick man. Tracy Good on the inside. Collects the first down pass at the 31-yard line. But that's just a pass that Illinois will concede for the balance of the afternoon. The kind of things you can do when you have a 31-point lead. David Klingler, fifth in the Heisman balloting a year ago. Klingler has a man open, and it is Marcus Grant. Grant wide open, and one of the few times that Klingler has looked upfield and has found a receiver that has broken away from the coverage. Grant will get first down yardage to the 42. Well, and it was a, a good, solid job up front. One of the few times today that Klingler has actually had the chance to survey the field and have a good line of sight upfield, and he found Grant. I mean, Klingler has been pressured the majority of the time here this afternoon. Miles, and you saw Klingler turn around and tell Miles he was going to give it to him. Let's go to New York quickly now. Here's Roger Twaddle. Watch Frank at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. The Orangemen turned it over on a fumble, and Shane Matthews from four yards out will find Willie Jackson, his third touchdown pass of the day. He has thrown 11 now in three games, and the Gators have closed the gap to seven. Let's go back to Frank. Second and eight for Houston at Illinois' 40-yard line. Shot out to Good. Good steps back inside, picks up the screen block, gets at the 37-yard line. It'll be third down at about four. Dana Howard, the freshman linebacker, with a fine play on Good. 
There is the Houston defensive contingent. They have logged some miles this afternoon and some hours out on that field. Klingler again splitting the zone as he's done now three times to JB3, John Brown the third. I tell you, there are not many passers, pro or college, could throw that ball in between the two zone defenders like Klingler has. Another sidearm throw, though, Frank. Boy, it had some steam on it. He's really, uh, that's becoming the throw of choice. Watch it here from high in the end zone. Rolling left, throwing with the right arm, right handed quarterback. That's a difficult thing to do. That's why the NFL is drooling over David Klingler. The pump fake firing into the end zone and yeah, you have to admire what this man does with the football. He pumps over to the right and that pass could have been caught for six and that was Ron Peters crossing at the back of the end zone. There's Peters. He's the front man in that stack just working straight across there. He's a freshman. That's about the only place that David Klingler could put the football. Would have been a nifty catch. Second and ten. And open in the end zone, and this time is John Brown the third. JB3 comes down with the touchdown from Klingler. So Klingler puts one on the boards from 15 yards out. John Brown the third with the great speed. We talk about great speed. You're not kidding. John Brown is fast. He once ran a 989 win eight at 100 meters. And that's covering some ground. That is. Keep in mind that this is a guy last year that had a 25 and a half yard reception average. That's that, that's making the most of every catch. Boy Scouts are looking at him. He's 6'3 and 200 pounds. Roman Anderson drills another one. Monday night, Chicago Soldier Field. We'll be there. Come back home. Yeah, we gonna come back, John Brown the third for a 15-yard touchdown for Houston. They have cut Illinois' lead to 24 points with 38 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And there will be the run and shoot faithful that will tell you. But that is not an insurmountable lead at this point in time. If I said it, I would be <laughs> accused of hyping the fourth fork. <laughs> so best in these situations to quote someone else. Exactly. <laughs> You've learned well, haven't you? Well, if Houston's to make a run at it, they're going to have to play. Are. They're going to have to play a whole lot better than they played through the first three quarters. They've been dominated by Illinois. Anderson. Puts it up high. Not deep. And Scott Turner will bring it up. And Scott Turner will go down to the 21 yard line. So Illinois' job now not to get too complacent about it, not to get too cautious. They just stay with their regular offense. Move the football, work on the clock. There is John Brown, the third. We talked about that incredible 989 wind aided 100 meters. That was a Dodge City Community Five College. Yards. On the kick machine, there'll be a five-yard penalty and re-kick. That was before he transferred to Houston, and we're going to do this all over again. Illinois, Illinois now in his fourth year. Taking, taking the line out of bowl games in each of his previous three years, and we'll be, of course, joining Roger Twible in New York for our our thrifty car rental post game report. Boy, we have people all over the country today and again, tonight. You know, again, I want to remind everybody about that Michigan Florida State game next week. That is an unusual start, an early start at 12 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Pacific. So, breakfast with the Seminoles and the Wolverines if you're on the West Coast. You never can tell. They might throw another. <laughs> well, it's not <laughs> often. Pass. It's not often you get that good of a matchup uh, this stage of the season, number one and number three. We won't see that again, probably for a decade. 
Roman Anderson to kick off once again. Call him a penalty. A decade. <laughs> a light year. And remember, think about this. A couple of Illini deep men, both of them looked at each other, and the ball went into the end zone, fortunately. And they'll take over at the 20 yard line. And again, the job for the Illini to keep things happening down there, not get complacent, not get conservative. John Makovic's been around long enough to know that, too. He's seen the good and the bad times. I remember when he came up and joined Tom Landry, who he still keeps in close touch with. And one of the great, bright young minds that we've seen come into the game. He went to Kansas City, was there for three years before leaving in 19. 87, taking a year off and then coming here to Illinois in 88. Jason Verdisco goes to work. Clinton Lynch. And this young sophomore is having quite a day. What'd you think of that, Mom and Dad? Huh? That's, I'm sure that brought Mr. and Mrs. Lynch out of their seat. Oh, that's what I mean. Throw something a little conservative, but keep that ball in the air. Keep it moving. You've been doing so well. And John Makovic comes out. Throwing the football, this is look high percentage the, stuff. Look at the touch, though. Gentry's up in the air. I mean, that, that's that's beautiful touch by Jason Verdusco. Lofted it up into the air when he had to, and I like that. Lynch didn't go out of bounds. Cut it back to the inside. On first down from the 40-yard line, Camino Bell hammers out to the 43-yard line. As time runs out here in the third quarter. We'll be returning with more action between Houston and Illinois after this message and then a word from our ABC station. Fourth quarter here in Champaign-Urbana in Illinois uh, on a day when Illinois has done little or nothing wrong and they lead the Houston Cougars 34 to 10. We have 15 minutes to play. They have a second down and seven. The ball at their own 43-yard line. And where they drawn off, the flags are everywhere. Goodbye. Joe Moody is gone, but the flags are down. Well, Houston was across the line of scrimmage. All that remains to be seen is whether or not they made contact. First of all, were they drawn off? Second of all, did they make contact before the snap, which would make it a dead play? They're calling this a touchdown. We have offside against the defense. We have a touchdown. 57 yards. Mitty from Loyola Academy in Chicago. Transfer from Oklahoma University. 57 yards and uh, the run and shoot we may have to reload and think about tomorrow. Beautiful blocking. Yeah, you can see Jason Youngblood, number 98, was all the way across the line of scrimmage. And Joe Muti, a little used. Running back, what a what a big kick for him. Chris Richardson. Forty-one to ten. Illinois leading Houston. Well, there's Joe Muti who gets a 57-yard touchdown this game. He didn't even have a carry coming into this game, and he, he comes out of this one with a nifty little touchdown and another long Illinois scoring drive. And we need to put together the numbers, guys, on, on the length of Illinois scoring drive so far this game. It's been, it's staggering. In fact, it's so staggering, I've forgotten what it is. Richardson, a line drive that'll carry into the end zone, and Good will watch it. And once again, Houston will start from the 20-yard line. Good kicking by Richardson today. He's either taken it out of the end zone or made it almost impossible to bring it out. And Houston, as time and time again, found themselves opening their offensive play from the 20-yard line. Thorough domination in this game by Illinois on both sides of the line, offensively and defensively. They've run the football. They have passed the football well. 494 yards in total offense for Illinois. Three turnovers, a key number there on the side of Houston. First down 
for Klingler. A little shovel pass inside, and that's the way it's gone most of the day as Austell Miles is nailed by Dana Howard, the freshman from East St. Louis. One of the great high school football programs in America is East St. Louis High School in East St. Louis, Illinois. Bob Shannon, the coach there, and Dana Howard, one of the just one in a long line of fine football players. Second and ten. Klingler again in deep trouble. Polasek, who was playing a fine game. This is a freshman linebacker. He's 6'2 and 230. And he's been all over the field today. And a serious case of negative deja vu. There's Lou Tepper, the defensive coordinator of the Fighting Illini. And boy, he must be proud of his charges today. But this is a team that was beaten last week by Miami 40 to 10 and they look up at the scoreboard now and see it's 41 to 10 in favor of Illinois that's yeah. that's a bad flashback and like that night in Miami their office now is backing up Singer again buys time by scrambling out of the pocket Tracy good was there but it was thrown behind him and for Klingler it's been not so much he has been getting pressure he's been getting that too but the coverage on his receivers has been, well, it's been exceptional. And lots of time, he has had the time to deliver the ball had he been able to find the open receiver. They were just covered well. Well, I feel sorry for David Klingler because I think far too much is made of the Heisman Trophy race. I think that far too much pressure is put on some of these young men in, in trying to accomplish this. The, the SIDs and the sports departments put out mega publications and and posters and right now David Klingler is watching the Heisman Trophy just evaporate right out from under. Thelman Johnson hits the ball and takes it out to the 47 yard line. Langston with a great punt from the end zone. But Thelmel Johnson brings it back. That's the way it's gone most of the day for Illinois and one picture will tell you a lot. There is Jeff Kinney, the backup quarterback to Jason Verdusco. His dad, the great football player at Nebraska, played with the Kansas City Chiefs and a fine football family. And you wonder when he may get an opportunity to get a shot at this game. Right now, though, Jason Verdusco steps under center for the Illini. And he's had almost the perfect day, Verdusco. Ball at the 48-yard line of Houston. Clinton Lynch. Flag comes in late as Lynch moves to the 43-yard line. Sam Faata. Faita. A six foot four, 280-pound freshman defensive lineman there. I know one thing what some people around the country are saying, particularly people that have played the University of Houston. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty. Still first down. Places uh, like Louisiana Tech. I bet they're saying to themselves, I bet if John Jenkins was coaching the Illini, he wouldn't take Verduzco out of the game. John Jenkins has not made a lot of friends in the coaching community. And it's, I guess it's the risk you run when you play that high profile offense. But when a disastrous Saturday afternoon comes along like the one Houston's experiencing this afternoon, among other coaches around the NCAA, you're not going to get a lot of sympathy. Shot by the disco. And coming down with the ball is Turner. Not bad coverage there by Steve Harris. But Verdisco again put it right on the money. Not bad coverage. I thought they were going to call interference. Looked like he was tackling Turner on his way down. Steve Harris, watch this. I mean, that's major league interference. He was hanging on Turner for two yards before Turner caught that ball and there was no flag thrown. Turner made the reception anyway, but wow, that's having to work hard to catch a pass. Turner with that great <laughs> speed, Big Ten Hurdles champion. Comes down with the ball, first and 10, Illinois, 21-yard line of Houston. Camino Bell works the right side and works the clock. This is a, just a an overpowering performance by Illinois last year's defending Big Ten co-champions. And I'll tell you something, uh, John Makovic is serving notice on people like uh, 
the good folks up in Ann Arbor that you know Michigan might not be the only real good team in the Big Ten this year. Illinois makes the Big Ten run. And they have next week off, Dan, and then October the 5th they go against Minnesota. Minnesota was thrashed by ooh, Baylor today, I think. And, I, and I'm going to reemphasize a point I made earlier. Jason Produsco has put that Heisman Trophy on, on notice that I'm a candidate this year. And yeah, it's Colorado that overwhelmed Minnesota today as Ben Lynch moves to the 15-yard line. But you're right. I'm, I'm a believer of about Illinois at this point, particularly their quarterback, Jason Verdusco. He's only 5'9", a 190-pounder, but I bet you that John Makovic is so happy he made that decision back in February of 90, Third down and 1988 four. when Makovic came here. It was only a week before he had to commit. A lot of players did not commit to come to Illinois. Verdusco did. And here comes Fagan. Turns the corner and looks for the corner. And they'll mark it at the one. And the former high school star from Deerfield Beach in Florida, Steve Fagan. It's another first down inside the one. Boy, a great hustle by the Houston defense to make sure that this wasn't a touchdown. Look at that block by Clinton Lynch. There's Fagan turning the corner. And there's the push out of bounds by Steve Harris. He saves, he saves a touchdown, but only by about six inches. Fagan, the fastest of the Illini running backs, breaking the, breaking the contain and getting around. Tilger, the tight end, in motion. And Camino Bell. And Illinois now doing it on the ground. Just good, solid work up front by the Illinois offensive line that's playing the game of the year, certainly for them in this young season. Total domination up front. It looks so good as the big tight end, Ken Dilger, leading that attack once again. 6'5", 243-pounder as Richardson hammers it through for the 48th point. They lead 48-10. to 10. We'll be back in a moment. should be seeing Jeff Kinney, at least perhaps. I don't know whether John Makovic will continue to go with Jason Verdusco with 11.25 remaining in the fourth quarter. Verdusco had a major role, and as Dan pointed out earlier, whereas Klingler might have trouble thinking Heisman, Verdusco can start thinking Heisman. And only a 48-yard touchdown drive for Illinois. That must be really disappointing. Richardson. Time an opportunity to bring one back by Andre Sanders and the whistle blows. He had his knee down on the field. Exactly. What? It's in our game. Andrew. An abysmal afternoon for. When you think back from the very beginning, it's hard to think of how many things have gone wrong for Houston. I mean, that's just a smart call by the official. He's. Down on his right knee when he fields mm -hmm. that kickoff. So Klingler will take over Houston offense at the nine yard line. Look at that 609 total yards for Illinois. Incomplete. Second and 10. Going behind the Oh, they're calling it interception. is going to get the third interception of the day. I thought it had. Come off the carpet, but they're going to give it to Rucker. And once again, a turnover. Klingler came in with no interceptions today. He has three. That's just a poor pass by David Klingler. Ooh. Throws it well behind Freddie Gilbert. Heads up by Derek Rucker. And that's one of the best catches of the day. Klingler just shaking his head. We mentioned he didn't have an interception coming into this game. He'd had a 
long string of completions without an interception, and now he has three. Jeff Kinney is in now, quarterback for the Illini. Fagan. Fagan inside the 15, close to the 12-yard line. Frank, we talked earlier about the scoring drives for Illinois. Take a Double look at this. 62, 69, 89, 96, 89, 70, and 80, and then that measly little 48 tossed in there. I can't recall ever seeing that many long drives by one team in one game. That was extraordinary offensive performance by Illinois. Second down and three. Wentz again pounds the middle up close to the 11 yard line. Foley with a 25 second clock. The 25 second clock will be kept on the field. Problem with the 25 second clock, so I will be kept on the field. If you heard that, Jason Lee, the 16 of 22, 340 yards, three touchdowns. I might point out that Illinois opened the season with well over a thousand yards of offense, and that's the largest number of yards they put together since they recorded statistics here at Illinois going back to 1920. And they're certainly going to, after three games, exceed the best ever. Well, Verdusco goes over 1,100 yards passing in only three games. I mean, that's, that's, that's just a strong start for Jason Verdusco. That was Steve Madison in a fullback, a freshman from Toronto. As in Daniel Ontario. Jackson, 26, was the tackler. Ball is up to Houston 10. Chris Richardson, who has been a major factor in Chris Richardson in for he's the got some snappy little shoes on here doesn't yeah, he he's, uh, for the you know, dude, but you get a kicker that put it in the end zone the for you. Right. It's, it's pretty nice there's some multicolored mm -hmm. kicks for you I, mean, that's, I don't uh, it's a whopping legs I don't, I don't give them any sort of a chance of being big seller Now they take it over 50. A good look at how they've narrowed the goalpost there in college football. And when you're out on that pass mark, pretty severe angle. But Richardson nails it nonetheless. 27-yard field goal. 9-10 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And Houston would like to have that disappear quickly. And a reminder, Dan and I will be moving on to Chicago. Joining Al Michaels there. Monday night football, the Jets and the Bears. And the Bears coming off their win over the Giants. And the Jets with a fine performance, a dramatically different team that you're going to see with these Jets. They're, they played well against the Bills in the game they feel they should have won, and they should have won. So the Bears, I'm sure, will not be looking past them, but that could be a good one. Monday night football from Chicago, 9 o'clock Eastern time. Be with us. Well, the, mal the malfunctioning of the 25-second clock here at Memorial Stadium is the only thing that has gone wrong when it comes to fighting Illini football this afternoon. Yep. That is it. That's the only thing wrong here. It was a game that we thought would carry right into darkness because of the two offenses. It may have carried Houston, uh, Houston on into uh, darkness. <laughs> Illinois has completed so many when they've thrown the football. The time has moved quickly. And they've also been able to run the ball. And here comes Chris Richardson. They're going to exhaust him. Tracy Good from the seven-yard line. With an opening. Good. The fine return out over the 40-yard line. John Jenkins now is going to have to do Maybe the best job of coaching that he's had to do since he's taken over this Houston program. As we talked about, he has a, a week off and then has Baylor at home. But a program that, that had lofty expectations has really struggled here the last couple weeks. And this is where a coach has to do his best work of pulling everything back together, trying to 
get the kids to settle down and get back to just playing good basic football. Very nearly the fourth interception as Illinois now is aligned with three defensive linemen. That was Rod Boykin. And I think there was a look at Klingler expressing some dissatisfaction with the route run by his receiver. I mean, that's... And this is going to be hard for David to hold it together, too. Don't... Don't lose it. From the shotgun. Illinois back to their four-man set. They've been alternating throughout the day. Three down linemen, four down linemen, and five and six defensive backs. Quick flip out to Freddie Gilbert. That's very little, if anything. I don't... I don't, uh, I, I can't help but sympathize with anyone who finds himself in, in the position John Jenkins and the Cougars are in right now. As you and I touched on earlier, Frank, we, we've both been on the short end of this one. And it is just about as bad a feeling as you can, as you can experience. Three man rush. And yet Klingler is still able to find a receiver, but he juggles the football as he goes out of bounds and it's ruled incomplete. Marcus Grant. Eight men were in the pass coverage and yet Grant was able to find an opening on the sidelines. Klingler got it to him. Grant bobbles the ball in and out of his hands. Now you have to have possession. And it looked as though he did. Sure looked like a catch to me. I mean, I think he had possession before he went out of bounds. That's that's a bad break. Bad break for Houston. That, was a, that should have been a first down. Whoa. Flag will go down, and Houston will keep the football running into the kicker. Langston. Robert Crumpton was in on that punt rush. Didn't get a piece of the ball, and it'll be running into the kicker. 8.37 remaining here. 51 to 10. On the defense. First down. Well, maybe some things happen for a reason. Although they never seem to do that in the game of football. But, you know, Houston had a first down if they would have been given that catch, which they, which they should have been. Here they end up with the, the first down anyway. That is... That's about the only thing that has gone in Houston's favor this afternoon. And the shotgun once again on first down. Klingler. Oh, Illinois good. with the blitz. Houston picks it up and they get the pass out to Freddie Gilbert. Who will pick up seven. Mike Hopkins defensively for Illinois. And he's played a fine game today. A 4.77 grade average out of a possible five. Illinois graduates. 90% of their players in the football program are very proud of that. Well, they should be. Hangler in trouble. Picked off. Aaron Shelby this time. Klingler's fourth interception. And Mike Pulaski, who was pursuing Klingler, Gets up very slowly, but he's played a great game for the Illini. I think right now John Jenkins has to uh, strongly consider taking Klingler out of the ball game. Uh, just he's just trying to do too much, trying to make something happen, gambling, and it, it's just not working. Here it is again, Klingler with time this time. Yeah, he had plenty of time. He, Receiver wasn't open. He's chased out of the pocket and he tried to do something yeah. that was impossible. Well, he had a receiver, Frank, but running at that angle, I mean, even he didn't have enough arm to, to muscle it down there. Illinois, first and ten. Now Steve Madison. The youngster from Toronto. And Jeff Kinney, he has the dimensions. 6'4", 205, a junior. Kinney's father played on the national championship team in Nebraska in 71, a two-time All-American. And Kinney actually 
Suffered a blood clot in the shoulder in 89 while backing up Jeff George, and that gave Verduzco a shot at the backup job, and, <laughs> and Verduzco was never let go. And he inherited the role from Kenny. Second down and 10. Illini from the 32-yard line. Madison again. Hustles his way to the 37-yard line. Good running. Everybody's happy here at Champaign Urbana today. They're not leaving either. About six and a half minutes left uh, in this game, and they are staying here to savor it all. Mike Klingler, a year ago, only threw 20 interceptions and 643 attempts. Today, he's had four. Fifth of what he had all last year. Flag is down. That they're keeping the 25-second clock on the field, and that's the only thing I could imagine that brought that flag. We have a dead ball, delay of game, on the offense, still third down. So, Illinois trying to stretch the clock, gets the five-yard penalty. There is Cleve Bryant, uh, the receiver coach for the University of Illinois, the former head coach at Ohio University, and my high school quarterback. Let me throw you. <laughs> Cleve and I went to high school together at Glenwood High School in Canton, Ohio, and he has really done well. It's first year here in the Illinois system, and he's done a fine job with their receivers. They've had a big day today. Third and ten. And George. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Brandon Harris, and incomplete. It'll be fourth down, and we're going to go to New York as Jeff Kinney misses on the third down conversion. Roger Twibel. Roger. Thank you very much, uh, Frank. Not a real good day for your Trojans at Southern Cal, but trailing 32-18 with about two and a half to go. Mazio Royster, who came back from an injury this week, trots it in. That makes it 32-25. The Trojans trail Arizona State by seven with two to go. Let's go back to Frank. Thank you, Roger. Only two minutes left for your guys there, Frank. They better. Lots of time. Lots of Tory Wells. Puts one up. And Houston will get the ball back at the 35-yard line. Spoken like a man of Troy, right? Yeah, well, now, Lim Swan, the former Trojan, is dealing with our colleague Al Michaels, the Arizona State alumni. They're calling that game on this very busy college day for ABC. Al, of course, a four-time letter winner at Arizona State. In wrestling and other sports. <laughs> 602 remaining. Thank you, School of Journalism. It says. On. David Klingler stays on. Austell Miles. Austell Miles, number 34. It's a couple out of it before John Sadari makes the stop. Those are the numbers for Klingler. Proceed to the far right. Tells you something else about 300 yard games. Klingler reads the pre snap set, moves his people around, connects with Verlin Brown. And Brown up near the first down marker. And he'll have it. <laughs> Superb job by Lou Tepper, the defensive coordinator for the Illini. Made it steady. They played the zone all the way. And they've got the pass rush. Klingler again trying to squeeze it in between the two zones. That time he overthrows Marcus Grant. He was successful earlier. There and there is Lou Tepper. He was successful earlier getting to John Brown the third. Tepper has put on quite a defensive scheme today. Again, he was on the spot because he was openly critical of John Jenkins 
and some of the scores that Jenkins has run up over the past couple of years. Oh, it's a weird looking flea flicker. But it's effective. Uh, that's, a, that's a blind pass, Frank. I mean, that is just a spin and you throw. They've executed that thing about three or four different times today, and every time it looked like there was an Illinois player that was close enough to intercept the ball if he could have reacted quickly enough. Sherman Smith, 760-pounder, gets the Houston first down. Klingler smokes one in. His intended receiver, Verlin Brown, and Verlin Brown was really hammered by Chris Slater. Number 85. As Illinois starts to trot out a few folks that we haven't seen. And they've got a few just for this occasion. College football, you can have as many as you want. And I'd say they have around 100. Chris Stetler, number 85, is their defensive line. It's that kind of a day for David Klingler. This has been an all-around bad day for Houston. David Klingler, of course, he is the person you look at. He is the one on the hot spot. And that goes with the fame, the glory, and later in life, the big bucks. But he's a, one of the best I've seen in a lot of years. Again, going into the zone coverage. No chance for the completion. Marcus Grant well covered. It'll be fourth down. That was throwing it into the sidelines. And that ball, that ball wasn't catchable by anybody. I guess this is a choice that John Jenkins is, make, uh, uh, is making that scoring a touchdown this late may do something for Klingler's confidence, but I, I think I might have I might have pulled him and given somebody else a shot. One fourth down. Almost intercepted and then it pops into the hands of the Cougars receiver, Ron Peters. And that one should have been intercepted as Klingler again tried to squeeze it into Peters. Mm, and Mike Hopkins saw nothing but end zone. I mean, that would have been a touchdown easily. Flags fly once again. Dead ball, illegal snap, on the offense, still first down. That's the thing that has troubled Houston as much as anything else, and it did against Miami, too, and that is illegal formations. The kind of penalties that you get from, uh, I don't know, concentration or lack of it or something, uh, it's not a complicated offense. And yet, on several occasions, we've had illegal formation. We've had movement before the snap. the shotgun and Klingler trying to get it to Freddie Gilbert. Just fired that one out of bounds incomplete. Gilbert well covered. Jeff Amison was there. Deep man in the zone. I can't imagine how painful this must be to watch for Houston fans to watch their team in the span of nine or ten days just completely disintegrate and as I said earlier, what a coaching job John Jenkins has in front of him over the next two weeks. October the 5th, it begins for real. The Southwest Conference will be Baylor, and Miles takes the shovel pass, and he's buried right at the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard. John Sadari was there first. I'm remaining in the game. Four oh six remaining. for the end zone. And again, good coverage. Just a reminder, because of the length of this 
game. We will be unable to bring you the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Show. I think one of the things we're also seeing here, Frank, by the way, Klingler is overthrowing the ball now whenever there's any doubt. I don't think he wants to, I don't think he wants to, to suffer another interception. I don't think we're going to see Klingler attempting to force that ball in there at all. Penalty on the play moves the ball inside the 30-yard line. Still third down, third down in a long 10. Not pretty. As Klingler goes down to the arms of Aaron Shelby. Back at the 44-yard line. Loss of 13. This is with a three-man rush. That's what's so discouraging about it. That's just a good hustle speed rush upfield that time. And boy, that's it's just totally disintegrating for the Houston Cougars. Fourth down and a long, long way. Miles, Austin Miles, the junior transfer from Pasadena Junior College, who has seen a lot of action here this afternoon on fourth down, and Illinois will take over with three minutes remaining in the game. And let's take a look at what's transpiring around the country. Syracuse, big game, putting a real surprise on Florida. The balls coming from behind, spoiling Jackie Sherrill and. The party of Mississippi State. Nothing new there with Oklahoma scoring a lot of points. Clemson over Temple, 37 to 7. Notre Dame whomping Michigan State. George Perlis can't be too happy on Denise Lansford. Illinois first and 10, the ball at their own 27 yard line. They lead 51 to 10 over the Houston Cougars. Jose O'Loughlin is the quarterback. There's it over the left side, and he'll have first down yardage, and let's take a look at some more scores. Tulsa, look at that, upsetting Texas A&M, that game in Tulsa. Boy, that's one of their biggest wins in years. Ohio State putting 33 on the board, and a strong Colorado team just whitewashes Minnesota. The Intellectual Bowl, Rutgers and Northwestern. Illinois with their third quarterback, J.J. O'Loughlin, a 6'2", 200-pound freshman. Uh, Jason Francisco watches from the sidelines after a great performance. Freshman from California. Big day for Jason Francisco. At the beginning of the season, this game, everyone looked forward to this game. He was sort of in the shadow of David Klingler, but with a great performance, both by his offensive line and great defensive there performance, go, he put on quite a show. Frank couldn't every football game of the year be played, but the weather just exactly like right. it is today. Be wonderful. It could not be better. Right. 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 Second down and eight. The line I keep it on the ground as Madison, another freshman. Youngster from Toronto gets the call over the right side. Gets a couple of yards. It'll be third down and five. Toledo a winner. On Central Michigan's on a roll. Last week, Michigan State. This week, Akron. Ball State. East Kent. Timmy Brown is in school. Ball State. Still holds numerous records there. It's all sweet. And again, as Illinois now ticks the seconds off the clock down to one minute. And Jason Rubisco. Tom McAfee. Put him very strongly, oh. himself strongly in the running for Heisman, I would say. You got that right. John McAfee says he's one of the strongest players, if not the strongest player on the team, pound for pound. Prepares as good as any player he has ever had, and he's had a lot of them. He's Former wrestler from Antioch High School, four letters there. And if you know the mentality of a wrestler, and a friend of mine, Dan Gable, the great gold medalist, you know that they are tough cookies. They don't know from losing. Score 
just continuing to come in. And it's marked inside the 15-yard line. Houston has 18 seconds on the clock. And then it's going to be a long ride home. And a week off before they put it back together again and go into the Southwest Conference competition. Going against Baylor. <laughs> I think Lou Tupper, Lou took Tupper a, he took a Gatorade bath on the sidelines. And just, what a job he did. And you see him he's being recognized for it, too. But I'll tell you, John McAvick also had a pretty good scheme of things going into it offensively. And he called him at all the right times. Well, there's that, that blind spin that goes back. And uh, that one almost was intercepted. Frank, let's uh, give credit to some of the guys that... Uh, Put on a good show yeah. here this afternoon for us. Our guys are very busy in New York. Our executive producer is on hand there, Jack O'Hara. Our coordinated producer of ABC's college football, Bob Goodrich. And now Houston keeps it on the ground. Today's game produced by Dick Buffington. Directed by Jim Jeanette. Our ski director, technical director Joe Chavo. Our associate producer for college football, Jim Ressler. Associate director Howard Shapiro. Our unit manager, Phil Engst. Our technical operations manager, Mel Girard, assistant to the producer Chris Schachter, statistician Scott Amento, and our spotter Kent Brown from here at the University of Illinois. Big day for this man, John McAvick. Our players of the game coming up, so stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Today, Chevrolet's most valuable players of the game are J.B. the third, John Brown the third from Houston, and Jason Verdusco from Illinois. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial aid. Frank, 51 to 10, Illinois over Houston. Let's go to Chicago. Indeed. The Jets and the Bears in Chicago Monday night. Be with us. For Dan Deardorff, this is Frank Gifford saying so long. Tonight, ABC Sports returns with more college football excitement when BYU meets Penn State or Frank Washington faces Nebraska or Georgia battles Alabama.